Greetings everyone and welcome back to TNO. I'm your host, Sheep Lover Mocha Lover, and right now we can do Rumors Reach the Government. It did not take long for the rumors to pass from the mouths of the miners to the ears of the government. Few believe that such claims could be true, but Saunders started an investigation regardless. Preposterous though the claims may be, they will still need investigating. Better safe than sorry, he supposed, so inspectors were sent to the mines to validate the claims, soon the truth will be known. Not much time passed before the preliminary reports started to come back. All they did not hear or bear good news. The miners were right, it was true all of it. Years of intensive excavation depleted the local coal fields of Wales. The country is about to run out of coal, and when it does, an enormous crisis will follow, the extent of which will almost surely bring down a government. Action must be taken to try and avoid the looming disaster the government now faces. By any means, the crisis must be hidden. For the good of the Welsh people, we must deal with, our, with this ourselves without any inter interference from those who oppose us. Our government will be preserved. Dear God, what have we let happen? We lost political power, get some more stability? Hey, I love stability. Not bad. Falsify statistics. Burn the report. Cover up findings. By silence. Let's cover up the findings. It's American way. Oh. And, mm, you know what? I'm going to pronounce this wrong. Played Kemri, Kemru, Kamro, Kamru has many opponents who would be keen to destabilize our government through any way they can. If they were to learn of the findings of our investigation, they would publish it in every paper, broadcast it to every radio, and sow discontent throughout Wales, which would lead to considerable hostility towards our party amongst the people. A large-scale cover would have to be undertaken to prevent this. The media must not find out; they will not undermine us, and we get the event of the American way, which is cool. In the American way. Ours is not the only government in crisis. Across the ocean in the U.S., President Nixon faces his own controversy against his enemies within the establishment. His methods have been ruthless, but they have been kept him, or they've kept him in power. Many of them in his party have already started a copy of the president's strategies and the rest of the government is about to follow. The approach has changed and the message to him all involved has been made clear. Deny everything, tell them nothing. With this in mind, we will endeavor to cover up the coal crisis. The people do not need to know. It is better that they will never know the true numbers. The chaos that transparency would cause simply is not worth it. If they knew the situation would only get worse than it already is. No one knows what lies the media would spread. We are doing the right thing. We will keep this from them. We've done nothing wrong. What? We are copying Tricky Dick here. This could not go wrong, right? It totally would never go wrong. I don't want to buy silence yet. I want to mm, falsify statistics. Having learned of our misunderstanding of the circumstances, we will have to prevent too many people learning of the extent of this disastrous situation. The number of themselves are damning enough to endanger our position in Parliament. They will have to. This will have to be changed. Orders will be given to start altering the statistics and coming from the mines. Perhaps we can keep played in power and before and end this before it spreads too far. And I will be right back, real quick. All right, everyone. My apologies about that, but I wanted to make sure that I could pronounce this more correctly. So it's probably Plaid Comri, right? Because I was told I was pronouncing it wrong, which I understood. So, Plaid Cymru, which sounds very, very weird to me, but hey, it's Welsh. Making the necessary adjustments, a dark-suited man stood into the room. He walked past another who poked at a roaring fire that was steeped in ash. But that did not concern him. Instead, he uncovered a file from his desk and took out the documents that were inside and began to do his work. A thin-tipped brush accurately coated the sections of the page, concealing the print beneath it. Page after page, you see the same thin layer over each offending word or statistic. Once he reached the end of the document, he turned it over and began to type over what he had censored, fixing what he saw necessary and leaving blank what he thought could not be salvaged. Satisfied with his efforts, he moved on to the next file, and this is how he worked for the rest of the day. He would return for the next day to do the same thing to make sure that all the government did not want to see altered, or what was altered. Out of sight. Out of mind. Very good. We lost political power, but even more stability. We'll go and burn some reports. We were wrong. The situation is worse than we could have possibly imagined. The investigation started to send back reports that confirm all of the miners' suspicions and were running out of coal. If the reports were to spread, confidence in the government would dissolve, guaranteeing the end of our leadership of Wales. We must not and will not allow this. Every single report from the mines will be disposed of promptly, reduced to ashes, never to be brought to the public. Keep calm and carry on, huh? Well, a little bit of lag, and that's alright. After that, we will buy silence. To avoid the chance that what that the discovery in the coal mines might spread, we have to contain the knowledge of its existence. Bonuses are to be offered to the miners who uncover the shortage, so long as they keep their mouths shut. The bosses of the mines will also receive an incentive to stay silent. Every single one of them, miner and owners alike, will have to have their silence bought. They must understand why we, they ought to stay quiet. We have to trust them or else face a ruin. 
Now, we must dispose of evidence, of course. Covering up the reports will not be easy enough. The government has no intention of letting any of this information get out. As a situation this seriously requires greater action than just hiding the documents, they have to be disposed of permanently. Every report from the mines is immediately handed to an official, who then sorts out the most dangerous files and place its places them into a separate pile. The offending documents are then picked up, carried over to the fireplace, and flung into the flames. Ink melts off the pages, paper returns to ash, and all the crimes are cleared. What remains of the reports that have been handled over were concealed free of the flames. They were to be dealt with differently later on. Every single one of the reports never reached one of the ministers. All of the trouble was dealt with by some subordinate of the party. All those who had allowed the crisis to occur are kept at arm's length from the dirty work. And so the man returns to his job, awaiting the arrival of the next set of reports to sort. Hopefully, that's all of it. Even less political power, or in exchange for maybe some more stability or something like that? I don't know. Doesn't matter to me. Yep, less political power, more stability. The American way. Our situation has started to mirror the events that took place in the United States of America. After the realization of the potential consequences of a coal shortage, we did what was necessary. The threat of the media and our other opponents forced us to take matters into our own hands. We will deny everything and hide what we can from them. If it is good enough for President Nixon, it is good enough for us. We did nothing wrong, and nothing will go wrong, right? Tricky Dick would not lead us down a dark pathway. An unexpected surprise. Eyes fixed on the road. Uh, he drove dangerously fast down the road with a clenched jaw and a head filled with fears of the future of the mine that he owned. Production had continued to drop off over the past month, money no longer coming in, his profits were rapidly diminishing. Soon he would not be able to pay even those who had sent down into the depths. It did not take him long to hurriedly arrive at his destination. Or he got out of his car and rushed inside to spend another day worrying over numbers. When he burst through the door of his office, he noticed an odd package that lay on his desk amongst the papers that were strewn around from it for the night before. He opened it with a hasty suspicion and was awash with relief when he saw what was inside. Money, bundles upon bundles of thin paper notes, tied loosely with string. A message fell out. It threateningly requested that he stayed silent about the situation in the mine. The cash was not just an all form. He was expected to share some with his workers for... Well, the cash was not just for him. He was expected to share some with his workers as a bonus for the collective silence. He pocketed his share, and all of a sudden he was not as concerned about as he had been earlier that day. Good old bribery. We lose even more political power. We'll get more stability back. I think I like the stability issue. I like it a lot. Honestly, if there's literally no debt, or no interest on the debt, there's literally no point to even cut it down then, right? Until we actually get some more problems here. Oh, look at all this! Yes, 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 yes. So the only way we're going to be, be able to beat England is get more arm XP and buy anti-tank equipment. That's the only way we're going to get more divisions, because we don't have, we have literally one military factory. So with this one, this is anti-tank equipment. So, man pats. That sounds very weird, man pats. But hey, I'll take it. I hope you will too. So after that... Well, are we going to keep on and carry on? Time to raise. Out of the frying pan and into the fire. I have no idea. Back to business. Or whitewash Saunders. Blame the Kyle Cle Keys Thomas. Implicate Evans. Evans and the other socialists are to blame for the crisis, which they've exacerbated. That's only the way to go. It seems like if we stay with uh, these guys, it, it's it's Okay. But I want to make... Because, okay, so a lot of the comments are saying we should get Kyle Evans in, so... That's probably the way we got to do it. So, out of the frying pan, whitewash Sanders. Saunders, huh? Accused Thomas. Answer to the public. Answer to the assembly. A vote of no confidence. I love crisis. So, we'll probably do out of the frying pan, into the fire. Having received the news of the dwindling production of the coal is bad. And the ensuing cover-up was rough as well. Chaos took hold over the government as smoke rose from the fires that were fueled by the reports whose numbers had already been overstated. Silence was bought, every mine was out of suspicion, yet it has gotten worse. I love equipment. Somehow the reports have leaked. Soon all of Wales will know of the impending coal catastrophe and more. Worryingly, the extent of a cover-up. Our efforts have failed us, and we may be spared and allowed to survive what has come. May we be spared. The American way? A successful cover-up. Oh. Oh, we can't do that one? Oh, maybe we can't. We'll see what happens. Oh, we have, oh, we have a successful cover-up. Oh. Back to business. Well, we'll see what happens then. Finally, the government has begun to relax. Its frantic its attempt to hide the worst of the crisis has been successful. There will be no catastrophe to be seen in Wales. The government will deal with it themselves discreetly in the ways it sees fit. Free from any outside forces trying to pry on in its actions, especially the skeptical media who would leap at any op opportunity to undermine us. And if any evidence has been buried far too deep to be found and circulated, all the knowledge has been secured. It's all under control. Miners still make their treacherous journey down to the depths where they expect to have an easier but much duller day. Their bosses are having lives have been having been made a lot easier too, as they no longer spend their days and nights being bothered by how the mines will perform. Life continues as it did before. Of course, sorting out a longer term solution would be no small feat, but for now the government can lower its guard a little. They think it's all over. I guess reports go this way. That kinda sucks. I'd love to implicate Evans. But hey, that doesn't mean things are over yet. 
that doesn't mean anything's over. After all of our efforts, it seems that the worst of our fears have passed. Finally, we can sort or start to turn our attention away from the coal mines and onto the more ordinary matters. Elsewhere, others carry on free of the knowledge that we've kept from them. Miners have returned to the depths, journalists remain unaware, and the rest of the public is none the wiser of the catastrophe that we've avoided. Uh, life has continued, and all is calm. This seems like things can get really bad later on. Equipment arrives. Great! We actually have a positive amount, finally. A leak! Uh-oh! It happened, there was a leak! All of our efforts were in vain. One of the reports the government itself had ordered has gone into the hands of the press. Many within the Plied, 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 have already surrendered to the idea that the government is doomed. As one unnamed minister was overheard frantically yelling, we're going to lose our effing government. The press is not expected to get any better after that. The government's issues have certainly caused an enormous amount of uproar across Wales, which has caused a disarray which has gripped the government these past few months to seep into the rest of the public life. The crisis has begun much sooner than anticipated. The minister is responsible to answer to the people they supposedly serve. If what seems to have occurred is true, the rule of deception will be brought down with them. And I think they'd all have thought this was over. It is now... Okay, cool. Whitewashing Saunders. Clyde Cymru has had its reputation permanently tarnished by the crisis. Those who still remain loyal to the party have started to look for ways to salvage what credibility they can. The plan that they decided on was an attempt to conceal Salander's role in the cover-up and presenting him as a trusted leader who was independent from the dirty work that others had carried out. The best way to present this has already been decided by the party. An interview between the Prime Minister and an interviewer from one of the few media outlets that remained indifferent to Clyde Cymru. An interview had already been scheduled as soon as possible. All that remains to be seen or done is to inform Saunders himself. Upon being told of the plan, Saunders was quietly startled. He had not been expected to have been put back into the public eye so soon, especially after such a crisis had unfurled. After hearing the date of the broadcast, he only felt more anxious, for once Saunders appeared to dread having to talk in front of the people's whales. Will you wish him luck? Do we really? Okay, can we still do this, Focus? Wait, we got more equipment. Okay, there's a little laggy. What's going on? Can we? Okay, so it cancelled. Okay. That's why I wash them. Our party's already started to be embroiled in the political disasters that followed the leak of one of our documents. If they, if we are to find a way to survive, we must find a way to downplay Saunders' rule and cover up. It is only the conceivable way to restore any form of public trust and implied, played, plied. The Prime Minister will be burdened or will be put through a blitz of talks with the press in order to gloss over any part that he or may, he may not have played in this crisis. With Saunders out of the turmoil, we can start to hope that one day the people of Wales will forgive the rest of the party. Aw, oh, yeah. My, that's not bad. Because now we can actually do that, and maybe in also get up to at least 10 combat width. Because honestly, because where we're at, 10 combat width is not good, 20 combat width is better. But even that 40 combat width is the way to go. But in an innocent man, it was just another interview with the press. At least that's what Prime Minister Saunders tried to convince himself. In reality, he dreaded what he was about to endure, that he was going to going to be the worst public appearance of his career. Yet he knew that he had to get through it for the sake of his credibility and his party. The interviewer finished addressing the audience and all too soon left into questioning the Prime Minister. We are all aware of the crisis that has developed over the past few days, but were you involved in any way with the initial response up to the investigation finding its subsequent cover-up? Not at all, came the uncharacteristically short reply. Sanders left it at that. The rest of the interview continued in a sim similar fashion, with the reporter asking increasingly probing questions, and Saunders stubbornly refused to answer in any detail, deny everything, tell them nothing. When an aide asked Saunders how he thought it all went, he shrugged and muttered in a low voice, Could have been worse, you know, could have been worse. Accuse in the clique. Accusing Thomas. Now, nah, we're going to implicate Evans, maybe? Evans and the other socialists in the government are to blame for the crisis which they have exacerbated. We all revealed to the people that it was in fact Evans and his lackeys within the trade unions that tried to cover up the fact that the coal mines of Wales were depleted. Implicating Evans into the cover-up will help clear the other members of our party that were involved. We risk exacerbating their crisis with more political infighting, but it's a risk we have to take to survive. We'll see what happens. I, I really have no idea what's going to happen. Uh, uh, comments. Let's see. Someone re People recommend we go with KO and take out England. Well, that's hopefully what we're going to do. We'll see what happens. We'll definitely see what happens. We have enough equipment, though. But, Evan sacrifice. No one expected it to have ever come to this, even in circumstances as bleak as these. Few would have thought that time were, would come where Evans would be forced to leave. Clyde Cymru. Yet, it is that where the party has ended up. In order to survive, the party will have to sacrifice one of our own. Widespread shock followed on Evans being kicked from the party. Shock was replaced by anger as the Welsh demanded to know how Evans was allowed to operate such a scheme. How could a split this bad have emerged in the party in the first place? Did he act alone, or does he still have subordinates working in the government? They demanded answers. Answers the, government's, the, the government did not have. Those who remained in the government hoped it had not been all in vain, yet it seemed to be getting worse. The government loses again. Oh, there's Evans. Roderick Bowen. Eh, it's not bad. Alright, 
Answer to assembly, answer to the, pu to the public. No matter how hard we might try, we will simply never be able to shift all the blame from a party as this crisis and its subsequent cover-up happened on our watch. We will be the ones who will have to be answer to the public. It won't be easy. Much embarrassment is certain to be caused as a result of the questioning, but we must try and make up for the faults of the past in the hopes of so satisfying the people. Maybe there is a chance that Italy wins the Italo-Turkish War that we can still claw back some credibility, too. So, that would be probably pretty good. Wow. I wanted to buy more stuff, but we have no political power now. Hopefully, this was all worth it. I still want to cut down the debt. I mean, we can invest more in the GDP, but debt... Mm. Mm. No, the other way's better. Answer to the Assembly, too. As the cross has gone on, our position within the Assembly has deteriorated. All of our former allies have stabbed us in the back, leaving us politically isolated. It will soon be impossible for us to continue leading wills. We are obliged to answer to the Assembly and its ministers. They will be told of the situation and the events that follow. The fate of our government will soon be decided by the rest of the Assembly. Protests in the streets. Outside the Welsh Assembly, a protest began to amass. Occupying the street where Prime Minister Saunders had en energetically campaigned not too long ago. But instead of the cheers of the past, all that could, not, could be heard were the enraged roars of the people betrayed. They had made up their mind they did not believe that Saunders had told them they wanted him out. It was not just the people of Cardiff who wanted Saunders gone. The rumors of his trickery had spread far and wide. The anger is less directed at the coal, and more and more the crisis in and of itself. The people knew that he, he had allowed to happen, this situation to happen, and they were not prepared to forgive him. And who could blame them? Most members of the public now viewed him with disdain and without respect of the Welsh people. How could he claim to be their leader? We are reaching our breaking point. Civilian construction? Don't mind if we do. Even more civilian construction. Don't mind us. I love civilian construction. An answer to the assembly and a vote of no confidence. We have failed Wales. Our efforts to appease the public have been limited success or seen limited success at best. An assembly has united against us. There's only... There is only so long that we can carry on in this position. Soon we have to swallow, swallow our pride and face a vote of no confidence. A vote few expect us to survive. Nevertheless, it, we will have to allow ourselves to be held accountable. We will have to hope that the people of Wales will be more forgiving. The anger of the assembly. Uh, Plaid Cymru now stands alone. As Saunders feared, every member of this coalition deserted him. The National Front now lies in tatters. He struggles to even hold his own party intact. Morale within the government has been shattered. Many ministers have started to refuse to even turn up to the assembly, but Saunders soldiers on, even as it becomes increasingly isolated. Day after day, he has to face her anger. Accusations lying, cheating, and causing the crisis following him throughout his days. He has become tired of having to repeat. Oh, that sucks. And repeat the denials, same denials again and again. Every time he does so, it only seems to make them more and more angry and intent on bringing him down. One day, he supposed this would be the only one left denying what had happened. He would be the only one left denying what had happened. Until that imagined day come, he would have to continue wadding or waiting through the mess he created. The ministers that still gather in the assembly wonder how long the prime minister will force him to continue. Alone in the assembly. Well, that sucks. That really sucks. Wow. That really hurts. Voted no confidence, and... What was left of the government has been on the last leg for weeks. It has signed through the last few weeks, unable to rally its former allies back to the cause. They now sit opposed to him, alongside the rest of the assembly, which has been united in contempt for the government. They believe the time has come for them to put it down for good. A vote of no confidence has been, has been already, or has already been. A vote that the government is bound to lose. This will be a decision that is going to be welcomed by many. The sheer size of the protests on the streets of Cardiff de demonstrated that. The people will not, will not be sorry to see Saunders and his party held accountable. They want him to be removed. In the end, Plaid Cymru, Cymru? will be brought down. It's all they deserve after what they try to get away with. It's almost over. And the Gulf leaves the government. Uh, before we go too far, like the guy in the thumbnail is this guy, Saunders Lewis. Uh, as some of you guys said, he's, he looks old. Looks kind of old, yeah. He is tired. And he looks kind of sad. You know, if you were in his position, I'd probably be sad too. But maybe that's just me. We got other comments to go through, but let's go with the Gulf. Some members of our government are starting to doubt how truthful our government has been over the last few weeks. Prime Minister. Uh, oh how truthful our government has been over the last few weeks, Prime Minister. Yeah, the, the, the text is a little awkward, and my pronunciation skills right now are severely lacking, but even like the senses sometimes don't make too much sense. But sometimes they do. Along with the majority of the public, I'm sorry, but I've been told to inform you that the Gulf plan on leaving our government, the situation is almost out of our control. It always has been, returned Saunders in a solemn voice. He was right. His government had nearly never truly been able to understand the seriousness of the crisis. And Saunders himself had never believed that he would succeed in hiding the truth from the press, now that he's been proven right. He has to sit down still whilst all he has helped to build up crumbles around him. But the socialist side of the picture, it was unlikely that any of the other members of the National Front Saunders had worked so hard to form were going to stay. Plaid Cymru would stand alone, paralyzing a minority government, limping towards what everyone else in Wales assumes will be its downfall. So we got... Ooh. More social democracy. 21%. Actually, they're even bigger. The end of an era. Saunders lost. Of course, he had. It was always 
It was all he had been doing these past few weeks, slumbling his way from failure to failure, but now he was used to it. He had lost the vote by a spectacular margin, as many members of his government simply did not even bother turning up to the vote. The result had been a foregone conclusion before the vote itself had even been called. Everyone in Wales knew it was over for Saunders. Plaid cum re will now be at the mercy of the voters, who are expected to be as unforgiving as opposition were. It will not be long before Plaid will be removed from the assembly completely. It is expected that Saunders' party will never be able to recover, especially now that Plaid cum re's name will be tainted from his moment onwards. Finally, the Prime Minister is removed from government. It makes the end of an era. An era that few will mind is over. We can finally begin to move on. Walsh leader, huh? Now that's a nice Walsh leader. He's a little happier. Maybe be a little bit less sad. Military austerity? Oh, no, 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 no. Spend, spend, spend. We gotta get that political power. Post power blues. Over the past chaotic months, Prime Minister Saunders had not been able to reflect all that much on his actions. His decisions have been made all too often on the spur of the moment with no time for contemplation. His judgments have been rash and ineffectual. Despite all the confusion, he never meant for the situation to end up like this, with Wells practically brought to his knees because of the coal crisis, a crisis which he could not help but feel largely to blame for. His role in the doomed cover-up that ensued did not help ease his guilt. Because of all his failures, he would almost certainly be removed from power. He almost believed that his time was up. Now, as he resigned to his inevitable demise, Saunders finally had time to reflect. He wondered if it could, get, could have gone differently, if he could have held the National Front together, if he could have come to clean over the crisis, if he would have held on to the trust of the Welsh people. But in the end, he could only ask himself one question. Where did it all go wrong? Hmm. I'm going to go ahead and make these guys 10 combo with at minimum. There you go. Now we're going to be lacking a lot of things. Well, actually, not too much. It's only, f what, four more battalions anyway, so it's not that much more. Bulgaria says Italy? Well, good luck with that. And you guys are still training. Train until you don't need any more, uh, which you also need it, which is fine. One last gasp. As Saunders continued to dwell in his collapsing condition, he could not help but think if there's a way out of this mess. If he could right the wrongs he committed himself. Could it be possible for him to cling on to power, though through means fair or foul? The upcoming elections appear to Saunders as a potential opportunity. Perhaps he could take matters into his own hands, gently tipping the balance here and there in order to preserve his government. He was already submerged in corruption, so why should he not continue along the path he set out for himself? Or maybe this is all too far, thought Saunders. If it was caught again, he would certainly become even more infamous. His cause would also become permanently damaged, tainted by his involvement. Welsh nationalism would likely never recover. It would be better for the sake of nationalists if he finally took a step away from the position. Yet it was the Prime Minister who ultimately decided who would, who would determine the future of Wales. Let the Welsh people decide their own fate. And when do we get another focus? Hmm. I don't know. We'll get another event and probably get another focus after that soon, anyways. Yeah, there's literally no point to do that, so just... And I barely, that basically did nothing, though. Hmm. I mean, that doesn't hurt us right now at all, so. Whatever. So we're going down election day. Ah, it looks, looks, it, look, it's a straight split between, oh, Comrie Gawk and Independence. Social Democracy, John Morris and the Independence. Who's John Morris? Conservative Democracy. Well, Social Democracy is probably not the way we want to go. Um, how do I get Kayo then? It seems like if we go with the Social Democrats, we probably won't be able to get Julian Kayo Evans. So a conservative democracy sounds more like it probably, so... I don't know. We'll see what happens. The giant mess of things. A unionist victory. So maybe we'll become unionists. I don't know. Gail Dawson anxiously hovers by the radio, waiting for the results of the election to be broadcast. He leans closer to the, as the speaker begins. A surprising turn of events, the Unionist Party has won the election. John Morris, the leader of the party, is now set to become the second Prime Minister of Wales, promising to reunify England and Wales. Morris, popular among the English post-war refugees, has already begun to outline his plans to bring about a power, peaceful unification of England and Wales. Emerson Thomas, out of the Cymru Geek Party, has declined to comment on the results, but the outspoken, controversial leader of the Free Wales Army... Julian K.O. Evans made it extremely clear that the FWA's position regarding the result, declaring his intention to oppose any attempts to replace the tyrannical English boot up upon Wales. Only time could tell whether the Union's plan will come to fruition. Gale sighs. It wasn't the increased labor benefits he'd been hoping for when he voted for the GOC, but maybe reunion with England wouldn't be so bad. As far as always spoken fondly of the United Kingdom. Besides, the worst outcome that could come out of reunification attempt would be that England refuses, right? It won't be so bad now, will it? Okay, cool. So this is a unionist path, so we might go down this path. I would really prefer to get the Kyle right now, but hey, I'm not, I'm not opposed to this, so. Unionism secured. The election results have been counted, and the unionists stand triumphant. We've been the backing of the Welsh people, and they are clear that they want our government to return to them a union with England. Before we can begin to strive towards our main goal, we have to address the part public that allowed us to be in this position in the first place. Morris himself will take charge of the preparations for his inauguration speech, and he'll have to make the right impression. There's a lot that depends on him keeping the situation stable, and there are many that would like to disrupt him. So maybe we can screw up here. Wow, John Morris, you were looking kind of weird. 
Unionists win the election. Britain is not a dream. Well, let's see about that. Rebranching the Welsh economy. The Union and State. Defend. Huh. Welsh Cultural Studies. Ooh, that's good. Bash Welsh Nationalism. Reinstate English as the official language. Glorify English heroes. You get more stu uh, political power, you lose stability. Industrial might. A purge? A compromise. Minimize Welsh. So it seems like if we try to minimize Welsh like culture and stuff, that might. That, it seems like it would probably spawn a coup, right? Maybe? I have no idea. I'd assume so. It's, it just sounds like that would spawn a coup. So. Oh, wow. How did they get this? That's, that's a bit extreme to get that much support. I mean, they had like, what, 11% before the election? And now this much? Or maybe there's a coup with, if you choose social democracy. I have no idea. So, my apologies if we got, aren't going the way people want, but we'll see what happens. Oh, look at that. Chaos returns to the street of Cardiff. The blast shook the walls of every shop, factory, and home. As dreadful noise rever reverberated throughout Wales, it would continue to echo as scenes like this became frighteningly more commonplace. Immediately after the attack occurred, it was clear that it was targeted several Union Welsh members who were headed towards the assembly. Most were doomed to never complete their journey. The bomb wiped the majority of them out instantly. Those poor enough to survive initially were left limbless, or bleeding, battered, and bruised. Moderate Unionists and Nationals alike have been incensed by the barbaric attack. However, that has not stopped some calling for retaliation and escalation. Their perpetrator is unlikely ever to be caught. Worse than that is the fact that they have succeeded. Wells is on fire. Yes, it is. So, we can buy stuff. Hunt down the FWA. The recent attack on Cardiff has shaken our young nation to its corp. In order to return the to ensure the continued stability of a country, we must crush the terrorists responsible for the act. A swift and decisive national campaign to find the hideouts and weapon caches is required to end this threat. Use minimal resources to find hideouts. So I have a feeling if I just don't use, do anything here, we'll get them in power. So, building a Welsh Navy. Britannia rules waves, or so the old saying went. The Royal Navy was always the pride of the British military, unparalleled and undefeated. It patrolled the seas of the world, protecting Britain and her empire across the globe. At least it was, was before it ended up being submerged below the channel. Unionists within the government look back upon the time when the English fleet could defend any threat, or against any threat. They believe that the government should build new warships to replace its navy that was lost all those years ago. Nevertheless, building a new navy from scratch will be extremely expensive. Going ahead with these plans would be risky, especially as public support for them is expected to be low. They would much rather that money be spent elsewhere. But the Union's party still wants the ships to be built, to be built never mind what the people think. They voted for us anyways. So, I mean, I could split this two campaigns. I do want to, like have quite a bit of a break between this campaign and the next time I play Wales, so we'll be rebranding the Welsh economy. If Wales is known for anything outside its borders, it would be known for its coal industry, which has grown increasingly reliant on. After the revelations that the past nationalist government failed to hide, everyone in Wales is now knowing that it would be impossible to continue this way. A new economy will have to be created. One that does not rely on the extraction of coal, it will have to be a priority as the lives of many ex-miners are only getting worse. We will have to act before anything, before it is too late to salvage anything. Black market is available? Cool. Great. We don't have political power for it. Nice. So, let's take a look. Alright, John Morris assumes office. It is with great gratitude for the voters of Wales that I take the position of Prime Minister today. Began John Morris in the midst of an excitable fervor. Like my honorable friend, Emrys Thomas, I endeavor at all times to do whatever I can to benefit all the people within Wales. As some of the more astute among you may have noticed, me and Mr. Thomas do indeed differ considerably in our preferred methods of bringing about such improvements. But there's not a shadow of doubt in my mind when I do say I, I do believe that Thomas will provide an excellent opposition on the benches across from my own. He announced as he gestured to the leader the gawk of opposite of him. I start my term as I mean to continue, spreading unity and leading Wales back towards a partnership with England, in any form that it may take. We cannot go it alone, we have to cooperate. The dramatic culmination of his speech received raucous cheers from his party members behind him. Morris chuckled to himself, pleased with his first impression as Prime Minister. Afterwards, Morris returned to his residence where he began to prepare for the challenges he faced as Prime Minister. He knew they would be numerous, but he was prepared. Hurrah for Prime Minister Morris. Good. Who cares about debt? Just keep investing it. There's literally no reason to cut this down. Because debt? We don't believe in interest on debt in Wales. Maybe I should move to Wales then. Anti tank equipment, huh? Hmm. Well, our guy's looking not too bad. But unfortunately, we're gonna need more army XP because we gotta to get to 20 combo with within probably two years, because of course England is gonna fall apart. Probably really relatively soon, because Germany's probably gonna have uh, Mr. Hitler die soon. About three weeks left. God, I wish we could build at least one more civilian factory, please. I just wish we had more political power. Invest, invest, invest. 
Even with the... Oh, there goes Madagascar. Oh, boy. FWA report. Despite its past circumstances, government sources now indicate that the FWA has become moderately threatening. Our informants come to this conclusion after they determined that the overall size of the group is considerably greater than it was when we first reported on it. The also has also improved in the amount of men on their disposal that enabled them to undertake small-scale guerrilla operations. But their overall strength is still insignificant compared to that of our own forces. However, this does not mean that the group should be ignored. There are still brutal terrorists that endanger the lives of every Welsh Unionist. Nothing to panic over. Collapse the German Madagascar. Great. Save the coal industry, focus on the factories. Yes, another civilian factory? Yes, that'll help our GDP. As part of our early efforts to reinvigorate the Welsh economy, it's been decided that a greater capacity of heavy industry will be needed to manufacture bigger and better products. More factories are to be constructed in certain towns and cities to reinforce what little exists of our current industrial base. There's no limit to the amount of labor that will be be on offer to these factories. Ex-miners need the work, and they will be well suited to some of the more physically demanding aspects of factory work. They ought to be get back to work quickly before we can do no longer help them. We want to help them as fast as possible. For Union Estate, uh, they could be called that you suited crisis. A painful withdrawal. It is surprising that the coal crisis has not was not noticed sooner than it was, even with the attempted cover-up. The effects could have been seen a long time before any official statement was leaked. Mine owners have been scrambling for weeks to find a way to balance their books. Miners have grown increasingly bored from days sat in the dark, scratching at the stone that had long ago been exhausted of any value, but the government does not seem to have the time to dwell on past misconceptions. The crisis is too far, too great to do such a thing. Coal's been the cornerstone of the Welsh economy now that it has been eroded away. The rest of the structure is likely to be crumbled alongside with it. If it does, it will take much more effort to clear out the rubble and rebuild the foundations, and a new support can be put in its place. However one looks at it, one thing is clear. If the workers of Wales are forced on the dole much longer, the government will face a similar fate to its already infamous predecessor. Best get moving quickly. We lose 1% stability for more political power? That's okay with me. I need more political power. We need it. We gotta get it. Oh, oh, we actually see this. And that's interesting, that they already have a gigantic decrease in popular support. They went from, like, what, 49, 51% to 35%? Oh, it's going down! Oh, look at that! That's awesome! Oh, that's actually going to be pretty tough if you want to play as a Unionist. Free Welsh Army Strength. Daily Desperate Support, plus 0.5. Jesus Christ, that is a lot! Wow! How's the GDP? That's not bad! It's great! I love it! Actually, the National Debt keeps going up higher. 79. But there's... Oh, well, of course, as far as we can see... Oh, it's because we have a deficit. Oh, that's why. Hmm, I don't like the deficit. But then again, it's just a deficit. It can't hurt us, right? Stop reliance on coal. Resource extraction gain. That's not bad. I like this one. So, even though it's been known that there is a critical shortage of coal for some time, experts of the Welsh coal have continued to leave the country. Of course, this cannot be allowed to continue. That coal is needed to fuel our factories and not the engines of the highest form bidder. Removing the financial incentive to over-exploit what remains of the coal reserves will also help to extend what limited time we have to act before it completely all dries up. I'm going to immediately do this first, though. So, so, we read the focus. Come over here. Spend. Slash. <sighs> that sucks so much. Military spending. Oh, we have a 5th division, too. Look at that. Nice. It doesn't matter. we got to spend the money on them. We won't be able to get to uh, 20. We might be able to get 20 to come with, maybe. But even if we do, like, this is not looking good. And right now, we're already at an anti-tank. So, let's get up to at least 5 more army XP. And then go from there. This might look pretty good. Save the coal industry? The Unionists may have been elected under the pretense that they were united under the aim of English reunification, but underneath the surface there are divisions over the economic direction of Wales. These disputes are unlikely to cause a serious split in the party, but a consensus will still have to be reached within the government. On one hand, the laborers want most of what remains of the coal industry running, in spite of the cost to reassure the miners. And on, the, on the other hand, the conservative wing of the party that would much prefer to leave the mines to their fate. That WA report. Activity from the groups of Grome. Skirmishes are more common. Firefights between FWA guerrillas and Unionists Soldiers have left several Welshmen dead. This is a sorry sight, and this will increase the confidence from the FWA is struggling. General K, of the commander of the FWA, and the cause of these deaths remains elusive, but our intelligence has led us to believe that he still directs his forces out of our reach. Our investigators embedded with the FWA have also seen more new recruits join the ranks. These fresh troops have strengthened them, greatly giving them additional soldiers to throw at our forces. The more soldiers will mean more casualties, which will only be worse for the Wales. Regardless of the FWA's sustained rise, we still believe that they will see a downturn in terrorist activity shortly, but they cannot keep this up much longer. How can we be sure? Why do we keep getting that when it doesn't even matter for us? Because we can't even do that stuff. we got to get more manpads, though. That's super, super important. Mm. Recruiting a fleet? Um, I'm pretty good. Cross this if Ulster agrees, huh? Use Ulster dockyards? I'm not interested in creating a fleet, I'll be honest. No, not at all. So, And you just need political power for this, which we don't have. So, manpads? Oh, they don't have any anti-tank. That sucks. 
Artillery would not be... Actually, artillery could save us some stuff. We'll see. Because artillery could save you some manpower if you make them 20 combo with. So, we'll Okay, they gave it to us. Thank you. Recruitment or... It seems like it's duplicating things. It just gives it to us. Yeah, it's literally duplicating it. We click on it once, we get it, and then they say it's order done or, you know, failed. And we got 100 units now of that. It's not bad. That's actually pretty good. Save the coal industry, though. We got stuff. Comprehensive strategic, strategic analysis. Yes, please. Follow it up with uh, this stuff. That's a little bit ahead of time. Mm, factory output. I mean, at least we can make more guns, probably. So. Actually, do it. Only have 130 guns. It's not very good, is it? No, we got 1900. That's pretty good. Save the coal industry. Hmm. That'd be nice, but we'll see what happens. Hey, at least the deficit's looking a little better. Wow, 170. Then again, who cares? As long as that growth gets just grows more faster and faster and faster, this doesn't matter too much. Oh, what's going on? We got hey, we have four factories. The death of a dude. Well, that sucks to be him. Anything else down here? No minimal resources. Now we good. We have more important things to buy anyway. So, all right. So let's stop doing this for now. I'd love to get more army XP. Screw. We're gonna keep going. Uh, we gotta get to like 10 or something. What do you mean that market order failed? We didn't buy anything. <laughs> what? Black arm trade increases? Well, that's not good for us, but that's also good. We get more attention growth. We lose the factory output, but we're gonna get more anyways with our technology, so I'm not too worried about that. After this one, shake it up a bit. With large scale coal production out of the picture, the government will have to start diversifying the global economy, making sure that the new economy is sufficiently buried will prevent a crisis as bad as the one we are so embroiled in from occurring again. It also helps us save off some of the worst of the economic collapse we were trying to avoid. The nation's reliance on coal, though, will have to be ended for it to thrive. Will we work the economy to be more diverse? I mean, that's what we initially planned out, right? So, yeah, we could do some resources, but now nah, we good. We good. And we'll be done buying artillery. Great. Please give me some man pads. Man pats. Please. Wales needs the man pats. <laughs> we need more soldiers, too. Whatever can give me more soldiers, actually, we should probably stop cutting military spending so we can use that extra manpower, so. Shake it up a bit. Nice. The fate of the mines. Coal has been such a central part of life in Wales that few can even begin to imagine what a time it is or what time without it would be like. So uncertainty started to emerge as many of the people who have grown up around coal mining and the culture has grown with it begin to fear what will come next. Will they lose their centuries old communities? How will the miners be laid off and to provide for the families? What future will there be there for children? The conservatives believe that propping up mines will only amount to a drain on public finances. It would be easier to allow Wales to decide the fate of the coal mines free from the unnecessary intervention of the government. Laborers within the government are strictly opposed to such measures. They would much rather that the government step in and support what remains of the old mining communities by bailing them out. Elsewhere, or elsewhere, will the mining societies go next? What future will there be for the people? Morris and his closest administrators are ministers are yet to finalize a decision and know all of them know of its critical importance to future Wales. Bail them out. Expenses rise. Growth will increase? Oh man, that'd be so nice. That'd be even more growth. Leave them to their fate? GDP growth will go down. Bail them out. Oh, I like stability though. Expenses? I don't give a crap about our expenses right now. You know, bail them out. Who cares? Ah, we got 2.5% more growth. That's all we wanted. 70 million for annual deficit. Pfft. Yeah, who cares? It's all about that GDP, man. All about that GDP. Shake it up a bit. Wow, look at that. That's a lot. And are they cooing us? No, maybe not yet. They have already 50% support. Oh, for almost 50%. Nice. Very nice. Oh, we can do this as well. We're good. Not gonna do it. I mean, we could slash spending, but 3 out of 20, not bad. Keep going, keep going. Equipment rot. We keep getting more artillery. Okay, yeah, why not? I'll take it. Industrial might though. Our economies have already started to show signs of improvement, mainly due to our new and increasingly effective stewardship. Expanding diversification has already started to see new enterprises cropping up across, across Wales. Industry has improved as well, and our increased support is paying off. Our industry is growing in strength, and we must make sure that it does not go to waste. And report. Worryingly, government resources are not noticing any downturn in FWA activity. Instead, they have continued to pull off ever more ambitious acts of terror towards those sympathetic to the Unionist cause. It is as if whenever we stamp them out, 
uh, they will only reappear somewhere else, more numerous, and compel them before. Their attacks have also increased in scale and number. A great amount of damage has already been done. We are starting to lose control of whales. We can no longer be sure of the true allegiances of our own soldiers. It is suspected that they have even been infiltrated our army. Yet this could not be possible after all we did to ensure that we remain loyal. Maybe those rumors are false, but the FWA has become so powerful we cannot be sure why. Either way, we, they will soon be powerful enough to confront the government directly. It's almost over. <laughs> it's almost over. Wow, that's a great news report to your minister. Tremendous reporting, guys. Tremendous reporting. Cool. The Berlin Conference ends. An interesting development from Italy. 1.9. Oh, can we get to 2 billion? Please, let's get to 2 billion. Please, 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 please. The Brits have failed to recently failed to fulfill an order, huh? I don't care about this. I'm not going to create a fleet right now. Our army can barely manage, manage to hold anything together right now. So why would I even be bothered with that? Shake it up a bit. And industrial might. Awesome. And I will be right back once again. All right, everyone. Sorry about that, but I had to use the restroom. But the black market equipment arrives. I literally just clicked on buying some manpats. And excellent. We have more manpats. Now, we still have a deficit. But hopefully this is actually kind of glitched. And we still actually get a little bit more uh, equipment. The dragon will roar again, though. Returning from a highly public leave of absence, Julian K. Evans now returns to the Senate in full military fatigues. While sporadic fighting broke out in and around the capital, few members of the security forces were willing to hitch themselves to the losing horse of the National Assembly. Any meaningful resistance has long since fled to the countryside. As the headquarters of the government were sieged, various politicians slated to be at the receiving end of Kyle's no prisoner nationalism quickly fled the building, willing to rest broken bones rather than be at the receiving end of an FWA rifle. For his part, Saunders Lewis surrendered peacefully to, to the attacking forces and will likely get away forgiven by the new regime due to his colossal role in achieving Walsh independence. After other members of the assembly captured by Kyle's forces will face no such mercy, as the path is cleared for an uninterrupted drive to strong Celtic Wales. Gold for countrymen, fire for the fifth colonists. And hopefully things change maybe here. No? Uh, we failed the black market order, but um... Alright, a day of change. It's a day like most others. The sun drifts lazily in the sky, obscured from the man clouds, so characteristic of the mother in the British Isles. The peace and quiet in front of the Welsh Assembly building seem almost unreal, picturesque. That tranquility is abruptly, sh abruptly shattered by the sounds of trucks and vans as it bursts around the corner full speed. A motley assortment of vehicles different in so many ways, but all united in purpose by the symbols on their sides and the flags they fly. All of them some variation of the Irwen, the symbol of the Free Wales Army. Out of these vehicles spills out dozens of men, some younger and older, and all armed to the teeth. As they take up positions around the building's entrances, prepare to enter. Prepare to enter. A man emerges from one of the vans, young, charismatic, unstable. He is Julian K. O. Evans, and he is here to protect Wales from the Anglophilic Unionist menace that none bars way. There we go. Oh wow, that is a different. Who are you? Oh. He's got a little bit, maybe a double chin going. I see. Julian, hello. The Welsh Revolution. Kofio Amkayo? This is weird. We're trying to... Wow, that's a lot of support. Um, playing as, you know, fiercely independent Welsh nationalists, but I'm still speaking English. That's probably because I don't know Welsh at all, so. Betrayed, divided, surrounded. This was a predicament our country found itself in as a traitorous parliament absolutely failed to care for the average Welshman. Those fools thought they could simply go teetering about as or long as their nation burned. They thought they could remove their leader and chop off any semblance of direction remaining. In short, those Anglophiles and communists thought there would be no consequences for the dereliction of duty. All they ended up was doing is waking the dragon. With the po politicians rounded up and the FWA awaiting orders from Prime Minister Keo, the ground is prepared for a cultural offensive against Anglicanization in all nefarious forms. All that's left is for our new leader to notify all people, from the ports of Cardiff to the quietest northern villages, that they'll have a role in the historic battle for the very fabric of the Welsh nation. Oh, military prosperity. Um, wow. Honestly, at this point, I don't even care. We're gonna keep. We're not gonna slash it anymore because I want to keep as much manpower with us as possible. Oh, because we just made another division. Look at that, another division. Nice. Twenty-six. We keep getting higher GDP. This is so awesome. Until the English attack. Oh, not the English. No, nothing but the English. Um. Hmm. I'm tempted to throw artillery on now, but I'm gonna wait until we get one, two, three, four. We have well, one, two, yeah. We're going to need 20 army XP. Let's get 20 army XP, and then we can throw all those divisions on there. That'd be okay. And actually, by... Well, I guess not by slashing military spending. We can increase our output of like machinery and materials and such, but whatever. Crush the splitters. There's no room in this great country for those who adhere to ideologies placed above the well-being of Wales. Gawk, uh... Cymru, and their false religion of socialism must be burned away if we're to develop a culture of the nation above all, which they clearly stand against. The once-mighty unity of 
Clyde Camry was forever shattered by their self righteous breakaway, dividing them right at this nation's most crucial juncture. Undoubtedly, their arrogance was key in the damage wrought by the coal crisis, as they damaged not just the government, but sowed chaos throughout their support of strikers. In this new Wales, we never forget nor forgive. A true patriot in charge, Cale was feeling like he should as the most powerful man in Wales. When he entered the radio station, he was greeted with cheers and salutes. Even if half the men doing so were interim operators from the FWA, it was still a marvelous feeling he had won. Now he walked on the studio station, accompanied by his new head of the formerly toothless and liberal institution. Sitting in the tall, comfortable leather seat, he took one breath and started to work through his words. The first time was not confident enough, the second time sounded almost sympathetic to the Unionists, the third was too quick and messy. Then, his fourth run through, he thought he had hit his strides. It was time to begin. Children of the Welsh Dragon, I come to you announcing the beginning of a bright future. The promise of many free centuries laid before us. You know me as a patriot, as the leader of the free Welsh army. I appreciate this image, but it's not my whole self. True, I am a cunning commander, a friend to my allies, and ruthless in dealing with foes, but there is much more to me, and my brothers in arms, than just that. Through, through my leadership, the FWA has proven to be made of effective administrators, compassionate family men, and hard workers. These are the virtues that we aim to bring in every aspect of our government and society, but that, my countrymen, is just the beginning. Under my leadership, the genocidal practices left over from English domination shall be destroyed. No longer must we feel ashamed of our culture, of our language. And in every schoolhouse, in every business, in every theater and bookshop, the heroic history of our nation and people will be celebrated. A truly independence can begin from this, one where all Welshmen are truly freed from the forces that dog him. The snide glaze of the Anglo, the callous abandonment of the villages, the feminization of our military. These are all shameful facets of our young nation that we shall absolutely combat. We are in a land surrounded by wolves, and if we do not act as if we already are engaged in a vicious battle survival, then we shall perish as a free nation. Today is just the beginning of the great Welsh century. Our tasks are many, our foes are mighty, but as a people we shall tear them down all on the road of sovereignty. The man we deserve. This is getting wild. As long as we have no interest on the debt, I'm totally okay with it. And that's a lot of GDP growth, new traders in the army. Reported the Defense Ministry on the recent military inquisition regarding status of unionists. Recent inquisition into the army produced evidence of widespread Anglo conspiracy. Multiple top officials detailed in ledger regarding military conspiracy were found to be engaged in pro-unionist actions since redacted. Various crimes committed over that time, evidence of resource misallocation, embezzlement of funds, covert disbursement from unionist propaganda, censorship of FWA materials, and operation of back channel to London. Deliberation on fate of, right of various ringleaders and conspiracy to set on the redacted. 18 officers arrested and determined to be deserving of execution redacted. Redacted officers are currently facing indefinite prison sentences to be reviewed in the immediate future. Interrogations deemed further necessary inquisitions into military. Indoctrinations of servicemen to subversive ideas may be widespread. Re-education to be considered through the re redacted may prove necessary. Ultimate step deemed necessary. Replace all open positions with the most loyal and cutting members of the FWA. Hundreds of potential candidates to be screened. Implementation imperative to further well-being of the army. Signed, Viper. Chilling findings? Hopeful prospects. Goodbye, generals and field marshals. Your days are numbered. And you are gone. Mm, I kind of like this. I kind of like the ranger. But I want someone who's got great defense and attack, so George Taylor's pretty much the way we gotta go. Mm, I'm gonna go ahead and make get him more max entrenchment. And I'm also gonna grab Ambusher. So, he's gonna be focused extremely on defense. We have six divisions? Wow. And your John Chaston. Your pretty good defense. Even more, because we're going to need... Um, defense is going to be key to our survival. So. 23 days, not bad. After this, split... Uh, split the Unionists. They know what is coming. Those do not immediately deal with what... with As we storm the Senate, fled to the dark crevices in which they reside. These traitorous creatures are so-called Unionists. The steps taken against them must be forceful and decisive, lest their disease of the mind continues to infect some de once decent Welshmen. From the pubs of Cardiff to the smallest dance halls in the northern villages, we must ensure that any suspected Unionist is reported to the authorities, so that we may reinstill with them the true values of Wales. With a few foolish enough to continue resistance against this surging tide, our most loyal soldiers await with newly established detention centers. In decades when our freedom is untouchable and we stand as a shining beacon of what a truly proud nation can achieve, the poisonous beliefs of the Unionists will be historical footnotes. To the children learning of the crimes in school, the idea that any politician ever tried to make his bow before England once more will appear not just real reprehensible, but incomprehensible. Star of the Beast, a daily report on activities to the Committee for Economic Nationalism. Burning at the King's Throne Pub in Swansea, a known Unionist gathering spot. Smashing of windows to Amy's Clothing Supply, a business operated by Unionist sympathizer Newport. Robbery of East, uh, Eastern Community Bank, Swansea, redacted, successfully acquired from said Anglo Hub of Commerce. Ransacking burned up redacted's bookshop in, in Hayon Y. Ep Ep Eponymous, owner was treated to severe beating. Borderlands Bed and Breakfast in Overton, known stopover for Anglo terrorists, was targeted via redacted. Explosion may have led to redacted, but little cause for concern necessary. Further activities of a minor significance have been cited in the document attached herein. Should the campaign against Ruth 
rootless mercantile class of Engels continue unabated, complete collapse of their wealth within redacted is predicted. Signed, Griffin. Wonderful news. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful news. Hey, look, manpower. Good, we need them. Eight army XP, not bad. We have six divisions in total. That's going to be really, really good for us. Uh, Bavarian Council, very cool. And Russia is killing itself. Who cares? More growth, come on. Infinite growth, please. Wow, we got a lot of support. Even conservative democracy ain't doing that well. But Burge the Plied. Plied. The records show that the Saunders Lewis is a national hero who helped create one Wales united and free. However, it would be wholly ignorant, perhaps borderline seditious, to claim that uh, Plied Comrie never wavered in his commitment to Welsh freedom. Though not entirely Lewis's fault, he has clearly failed to prevent liberals and Anglophiles from infiltrating the party. Their day of judgment finally has come. Even the lowliest field officers of Plied or Plied found themselves occupied by weak-willed traitors to the cause of national sovereignty. These party members do not have to be purged if they immediately swear themselves to carrying out Kyle's program. Those still clinging to English liberal thought, of course, have no place in a proud society, let alone its guiding party. Various leaders of these sects with pl Plied have already been mocked. While some fifth columnists are rumored to have been calling our plan a way of weakening a precarious position, they are simply fearful of what is coming their way, yes. Plied will be disorganized in some areas for a brief time, but this will simply mean that... <coughs> Excuse me. Uh... It's coming the way. Yes, Plaid will be disorganized in some areas for a brief period, but this will simply mean that truer defenders of Wales, ones not incumbent on suited bureaucrats to carry out their will, can implement Kyle's program. The age of debates and acquiescence, acquiescence, oh my goodness, an age of lambs shall come to an end. Uh, Plaid come reeds, ruins will be built up into a fortress for this age of wolves. Acquiescence. I can't, why could I not say that word? Acquiescence. Hmm. Maybe I'm still wrong about it. Organization recovery, yes please. Next up, oh actually, I forgot about this. Research speed, that's going to be really, really important too. Well, we still need to get some more output too. But 15% cap growth, that's not bad. We got to get that one, so. Eh, not bad. Beautiful. Just, mmm, I love Wales. And we actually change your color too. That's interesting. I wonder if we could get any support from like, Himmler. I don't know. And it's October... 1963. Oh, I was going to ask, like, when is Mr. Hitler going to die? Or, let's just say, hey, hey, Hitler. But democracy is dead. In these troubled times, some privileges must be restricted and rescinded in order to ensure safety and security. Democratic involvement is one such privilege. There is bound to be some consternation over this amongst the population, but they may be well to understand that it is for their own good. Without the shackles of democracy holding us back, we are able to properly direct the country towards a better future for the Welsh people. Surely no one will be able to doubt our good intentions. Illegal trade unions? Okay. Ooh, industrial expertise monthly change minus 0.5. That's not good. Uh, vote franchise law, lose stability, more despotism, more political power gain, though. Which makes sense. Wow. Black markets are available. They have anti air. Well, I, I prefer anti tank. Hey, we finally got a 10 army XP. So we'll get up to 20 army XP and then not train anymore, and we'll do okay. Hopefully. We're going to need some more artillery, though. Anti-air, I mean, that's okay. We could use that once we get some more gun upgrades, but... Not really worth it. Now that Hitler's died, the German Civil War is literally spawning as... Yep, as we were lagging. And... So it begins. Everything's falling apart. Well, if nothing else is here, I mean, we could probably do it for later. Eh, just do it anyways. We'll see what happens. Bulgaria says to Germany. Uh, okay, which Germany are they siding with? That's a probably good question to ask. We still have minus 12% stability, but whatever. Democracy's dead, but Wales is alive. It arrives. Black market order failed, and it arrives. Only you can stop the black market. But Wales is alive. Now that we have assumed control of the country, we can now begin to move the country forward. The dissonance must be crushed, the opposition must be silenced, and the people must be unified towards our common enemy, the perfidious English. English. There's so much uncertainty, but one thing is for certain. Wales is the ascendancy. It's in the ascendancy, and we shall never be under the boot. Why did I click on enter? My apologies. Of any other country ever again. My apologies for, like, mince pronouncing words and misclicking and such like that so quickly. My, my apologies. My mind is apparently slipping. But then again, I'm playing Wales, so it happens, right? Julian has gone crazy. Hey! A fourth one, maybe? Sure, more equipment arrives. Hey, this is what we like to see. Can we actually help exploit both sides of the war? That'd be kind of cool if we actually could. When's that going to be done? Oh, there goes the French. November 22nd. Wow, that takes so long. Hey, we got some anti tank. God, it looks pretty bad, honestly. But, hey, whatever. Martial law. 
Um, okay, we get more stability. Political power. More cost, but I don't care. Brothers fight brother than most civil, uncivil wars. Martial law. It would seem that suspending democracy hasn't been so well received by the populace. If we are to properly run the country, drastic measures will need to be taken. The military must control most of normal civilian functions in order to fun ensure stability in these troubled times. Dissent will surely evaporate once the free world's armies steps in. After all, the people will respect authority, especially when they realize it's for, it's for their own good. Very good. Five days left. Serve dries up. Everything is falling apart in Europe. As it should. And there goes how done it's. Two billion in terms of GDP? That's not enough. We need more growth. Martial law it is. Hey, we, got, we do have some stability though. That's pretty good. Boers. Look at all this stuff going on. Domino shall stop. We'll see what happens. Is there anything we can do with these guys? Can we actually send them volunteers? That'd be kind of cool. That'd be kind of funny. We could, that'd be cool if we could send volunteers to both sides to really piss each side off and kill each, as much English as possible. <laughs> but we're going to storm opposition offices. The other parties, the weaklings and... Uh, Cymru Gok and the boot-looking Anglophiles of the Unionist Party are the cancer of the heart of Wales. We must remove their tainting influence on the country by force if necessary. The Free Welsh Army, or the Free Wales Army, is only the party with the best interests of the Welsh people in it, mind. Even if those people do not realize it yet. The people cannot be trusted to make the right choice of leadership. We shall make it easy for them and remove from them the burden of choice. Sounds like nothing could go wrong with that. Absolutely nothing. Not bad. Not bad. 2.08. Keep going up. No debt. Well, no interest on the debt. No problem. Actually, what is this? Ah, uh, nationwide martial law. Oh, that does hurt us a little bit. Oh, now we have no stability. Okay. Oh, wow. That really hurts. At this point, can we just make this? We might be able to make it before the war actually breaks out. So, never mind. It's going to be completed in literally 50 years. Or 40 years. 40 years. Holy cow. If we do that... That's actually much quicker than this. Why is he, do these cost more? 12400 These actually cost more, huh? I didn't realize they cost more. I guess I barely know this mod. But a Welsh National Revolution. The line has always owed its victories to the drag, dr dragon, and yet the despicable Angles have the gall to celebrate their victories as if it wasn't our blood and toil that led them to curb. We must reinstate the pride the Welsh people have lost in themselves over the centuries under the English boot. The Mab Darogan of Wales shall enact a national revolution to rebirth Wales from its ruins. Or you more daily political power, less stability, more war support. Cool. Your loyalty or your life. 9.15 a.m. Cardiff HQ for Gok Cymru. Alex is pouring himself a second mug of coffee, recovering from another night of absolutely atrocious sleep. No matter how hard he tried, it seemed impossible to fully excise from his mind the horrible maelstrom that occurred during the Cardiff march. How foolish for him to think that nothing worse could come after that life would quickly return to normal. Ever since the ascendance of Julian Kao to the leadership of state, Alex had been watching with deep anxiety over the new pronounce pronouncements coming out every day. Gok Kamri never meant much to him, just barely a voting age. The only reason he found himself at their headquarters was because of the recent opening for a mail writer. Returning to the staff writers, he was set to prepare his seventh version of the latest letter leadership wanted sent to send out. A simple donation request given by Kayo's recent bluster against them. The situation had made him, for the first time, feel a connection to all of this. Feel like he was a part of something that could help Wales. Why, he could wonder, was I so adverse to supporting my employers? 9.25 a.m. Alex heard screams coming from the first floor. Here's from the front desk. Secretary crying out for help. Suddenly, he's back in that awful night. Gunfire, broken glass, fear permeating every part of his body. The world seems to melt away in his paralysis. Every wall just a mere transient presence. The screams came hard and fast. Five men in FWA fatigues. SMG slung over their backs. He could hardly leave his seat before one pulls out, pulls him out of it, grabs him by the collar of his sweater, and throws him on the ground. A military boot begins to stomp on his face, and then his guts, and before he knows, the crushing blows land from seemingly every direction. Then it's over. A crackle from a radio returns to him to reality once again. Gok Kamri has been taken care of here in Cardiff. Can we move on to the gosh darn commie press that they have running on 8th Street? Then the men ran off, leaving Alex and the rest of the squirrel workers to endure the aftermath. The sin has no place in New Wales. Hey, stability, political power! Everyone loves it, whether they like it or not. The scum of the earth. Combat angles at all costs. Segre we <laughs> segregation. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. Second class citizens promote false values. Surrender limit. Division defense on core territory. That's pretty good. Fate of the military. Anti-unionist purge. Army experience gain. Recruitable population factor. Division recovery. I don't want to do that one. I gotta get 20 combat with before we do that one. Integrate the free Welsh army. Okay, that looks pretty good. Get even more political power that we don't really need. Celebrate their achievements, political officers. That's not bad. I'm going to go to the scum of the earth next, though. We seize power from the men of Wales. 
All patriotic citizens know which side they are on and shall fight alongside us. Unfortunately, not all this nation is truly patriotic. There's a fifth column in their midst and one that bears a foul and traitor's flag. These are the Anglos, the loyalists of the old regime. We must do away with them if we are to make any real progress. The process will be twofold. Undoing the slave mentality their lives have imposed upon our once indomitable culture and removing any ability of theirs to poison the Welsh mind. No more shall the children be taught by the limp-wristed cowards. No more shall the workers be betrayed by union scum. The fire of the dragon is set to burn once more and the Anglos have nowhere to stand but in its path. So, this is the final uh, focus that we'll do for now. And I think you all the comments. Let's see. So people recommend I play as Bormans Germany? Well, I will eventually. I promise you that. Play as Algeria. Now, I'll play as Algeria maybe someday, but... If they have a unique focus feed? Yeah, they do. Okay, maybe we'll play as Algeria someday. How's this Algeria doing? Not that good. So, and... Play as Libisoc, or Liberal Socialists... No, well, Social Liberals. Um, Himmler, England. Eventually, I'm going to play England again sometime. I'm not sure when, though. And, yeah, eventually I will do a Unionist and Socialist Wales game. But... That's what we're going to end today's episode. If you enjoyed it, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we'll probably end up in a war against the English, and I just realized we have ships. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.